How's it going everybody? It's John. Today we're going to be talking about brainstorming versus ideation. And I have something a little bit more dressed up than my usual presentations that I've been doing in Miro because this is a presentation that I've done in the past. So we're going to walk through it together. We're going to address the key differences between these two things. So let's get started. Who is this for? Well, brainstorming and ideation is basically for anybody, regardless of skill set, department, or whatever industry you're in. You can apply this anywhere, whether you're an entrepreneur, whether you're an executive, a manager, or an IC. And, you know, it's not limited to professional use. You can use this to solve problems in your personal life as well. Could be related to your personal finances, could be related to choices you need to make. So quick summary. What's the goal for this primer? Basically, I'm sharing my opinions and observations that I've seen in a professional day-to-day -day context. And I'm going to visualize the flow of brainstorming and ideation to make it very clear as to how they function. And then I'm going to explain the gaps between both brainstorming and ideation. And at the end of this, I'm going to talk briefly about artifacts. So the outcome for this is you should walk away being able to understand what brainstorming and ideation are and when to use them specifically. And that's going to allow you to identify when they're being used and do any corrections if needed. So my personal observations with this is where they're similar, right? They're both methods for generating ideas. And where they're different, basically brainstorm is much more unstructured. Brainstorm has a tendency to throw stuff on the wall and see if it sticks, whereas ideation is specifically framed to be fidelity, time, quantity, and iteration based. Brainstorming usually involves everybody sharing in real time. So as people get ideas, they usually blurt them out loud. Maybe they'll do a couple drawings here and there and then kind of show them to everybody as they're doing it. And this is going to be uh, the whole kind of approach for everybody involved in the brainstorm. Whereas ideation is done in silo with peer discussions at the end, which is known as diverging and then converging. And to finish it off, brainstorming has usually very poor cataloging of artifacts. So what are artifacts? Artifacts are basically just whatever idea was said during a brainstorm. And by experience, a lot of the stuff that happens in brainstorm is about 80% verbal and 20% written down. So it's a very poor cataloging of artifacts which means that we're losing a lot of potential stuff that we could go back to later and pick up and possibly try something else. Whereas ideation, the cataloging of artifacts is systematic. You are doing this on your own. You are doing it on paper. So everything that comes through your mind ends up on paper. So what does brainstorming look like when we actually visualize it? Usually at the beginning of the conversation, there's a definition portion where somebody's going to frame a problem and then everybody simultaneously is going to say something out loud. Blue in this case is saying we could solve it by doing a circle. Pink is saying we can solve it by doing a triangle and green is saying we can solve it by doing a star. And then, you know, pink says, I'll take your circle and I'll make it bigger. And then blue says, okay, perfect. I'm going to combine your idea with mine and then green throws another idea, et cetera, et cetera, where people are just kind of sharing what's in their head, possibly, like I said, doing a bit of drawings here and there. And this usually lasts between five to 30 minutes. Eventually, somebody or the group picks an idea that they like, and they converge on this idea. And usually they start remolding it a little bit, right? They'll change it until they come to a conclusion and then say, we'll move forward with this idea. So if we count the number of artifacts, there's actually one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven artifacts with one specific solution. So let's look at ideation now. Ideation, there's understanding and then defining. So the key factor, usually when people start brainstorming, they'll go directly to a solution, but they won't take time to break down the problem. And in this case, you're breaking down the problem in ideation before you even start, right? The understand phase is about doing your research, understanding problem versus root cause, so you can address the right thing. And then you begin to define what an ideal outcome would look like. So afterwards, 
everybody diverges and then they start ideating. So blue does eight solutions, pink does eight solutions, and green does eight solutions. They all have their variances. And during this process, everybody's isolated from one another. They're not doing this in real time where they're sharing their ideas, right? This is where the fidelity, quantity, time, and iteration base actually kicks in. So usually the first kind of iterations of the ideation process are very low fidelity. The goal is to get as much quantity and as much out of your head as possible. So after everybody's done ideating on their own, which is the diverge phase, everybody converges together and then they start looking at what everybody did. So you can see from the 11 artifacts we had in brainstorming earlier, which included even the final refinements, now we have 18 artifacts, but we're still in a discovery type phase. So in the convergence phase, it's common to vote and then people will be assigned a number of votes and they can vote on the solution that they like best, whether it's theirs or uh, of their peers. And then you repeat this process continuously. So once you've made the selection from each and every person, you take those ideas and then you start again. This time you might do less quantity, right? Instead of eight, it could be four, but you'll increase the fidelity to add more detail and get more specific in terms of what the solution actually encompasses. We're going to look at that in the next slide right now. So if we were to visualize it on a macro scale, this is what that process would look like, right? You start off, there's a lot of quantity, but the fidelity is low. And then as you repeat the iterations of the ideation process of diverging and converging, you increase the fidelity and you lower the quantity. So to make it a little bit easier, I'm going to display this portion. As you can see, the uptick is divergence and then the downtick is convergence. And at the end, you have a final artifact, but you're actually generating artifacts all along the way. They're just in the middle of this process right here. So you can see you're generating tons of little artifacts, but they're very small, which means they're low in fidelity. As you move forward in the iterative process of ideation, you can see here that you're reducing the quantity of artifacts, but you're increasing their fidelity. This is why they're increasing in size. And then at the third iteration, you know, it's very, very detailed, but there's a bit less of them. And then you actually choose that as the solution you want to move forward with. So this could be applied to multiple things. It could be pieces of copywriting. It could be, it could be logos. It could be slogans. It could be UI, it could be anything. So in a software use case, essentially when you have an ideation session, you might make multiple sessions out of a session. But as you can see in the prototype lifecycle, those three sessions, could mean one version of the prototype. So that means you can actually visualize the prototype, the alpha version and the beta version, just like the normal cycle of ideation, right? You're going through an iterative process where you start out a little bit more broad when you're building out the software, it's a little bit less put together, but as you move forward in time, you're increasing the quality and the fidelity of the software. So this doesn't only happen before something is actually created, it happens when something is actually live. That's why you ship often and then you improve as you go. So in the real world, if you're not doing computational design, you're doing more of a classical design approach. You're going to want to do as much ideation upfront as possible, obviously, because the cost is much different than shipping software. In the classical design, you're doing molds, there's manufacturing, there's tons of stuff. And if you get it wrong, Usually it takes about a year or so before you get a new version out. So that's why companies do this process much more extensively than they do with software. And it looks something like this. This is an example of, I think the HTC Vive, the VR headset and the controller. You can see that there's tons of different controllers. They're trying out the grips, all these things, just as if they were the real thing. And you can also see more of the prototype parts, which are in gray, probably 3D printed. And that really allows them to get a nice feel and test that out before they actually send it off to be manufactured on a massive scale. So this is ideation applied to industrial design. And that's it. In this case, there's no a wrap up or live questions, but if you have any, feel free to leave them in the comment. And as always, if you found this video valuable, don't be shy to press that like button to give that YouTube algorithm a boost, and I'll catch you in the next one.